As a photographer, you know, the, the most fun you can have is when you've got a subject that allows you to play creatively with light. When I photographed humans, for example, I used to use light all the time because it allows me to sculpt around the subject to emphasise certain features. Um, the challenge here is doing that on a subject that's five millimetres long, but the principles are still the same. I, I came into this project, Extinct and Endangered, with the view that I think it should talk about more serious and pressing subject of insect decline and, and biodiversity. I don't think people really understand the importance of insects and what they do for us, not you know, us, us as a species, but the planet as a whole. We need to understand that they're important and we can't just ignore them because they're hard to see. We think that insects evolved sometime around 450 million years ago, but we know that winged insects, they probably evolved around 400 million years ago. It was before the rise of flowering plants, and there was no birds, there was no bats, there were no pterosaurs, there was nothing in the sky until insects. It's hard to imagine the world before insects because so much of what is characteristic about the earth that we live in has been shaped by you know, hundreds of millions of years of insect evolution. From the morning we got up to the point when I'm speaking to you now, actually insects have been part of that, whether it was in the clothing that we wear, the food that we're eating. There's a lot of things that we kind of take for granted that insects are doing. Most people don't know about the incredibly important ecological roles that so many insects play. They're the main pollinators of plants. About 85% of the world's flowering plants are pollinated by insects. You know, they decompose things. They're a great source of food for a lot of animals. They really structure our ecosystem. Understanding the history of Earth is understanding the history of insects. I think a core responsibility as, as a scientist, regardless of what field you're in, is you make the unseen seen. And I think insects get overlooked a lot and get unseen a lot. But when you can see them literally larger than life, it's a way to to realize their importance in the world. Working at this kind of magnification brings a whole new set of challenges. With every different insect that you photograph, there's, there's so many different elements to it that are unique to that specific insect. Hairs, for example, come in so many different varieties. That I know, before I started shooting macro and insects, I had no idea about you know the fact that the hairs on the back of a tiger beetle, they seem to be hollow. You know, they, Certainly when you, when you put light in them, they kind of glow. Tiger beetles in North America are small. They're about an inch to about a half inch long. Uh, they all have large, very large eyes. They've got these very large jaws. Uh, they're vicious predators. And they all have very, very long legs because they're fast runners. Tiger beetles inherently have evolved to live in very dynamic environments, whether it's deserts or beaches. The problem is that we as humans have made some of those habitats unlivably dynamic even for tiger beetles. The first indication that we had that drew a lot of alarm to the plummeting of insect populations and, and species diversity was a 2017 study which recorded dramatic declines in specimen numbers and species numbers. And that was in Germany. Um, since then, people have rounded up data and we're doing a lot more studies, but the indications are that it's happening globally. And it's something that people have noticed anecdotally for a long time. Where are all the moths at the porch lights? When I was a, a kiddie, I remember you go out in a car on a motorway or freeway, your windshield and your, the front of the car will be splattered with, with insects. You know, it just doesn't happen anymore. And that is just a, a simple way we can understand that the actual, the mass, the volume of insects surrounding us has declined. It's also the diversity though. You know, you can have vast quantities of insects, but you need diversity. You need to, to have multiple species working in harmony to produce a balanced ecosystem. And that's what we're losing. Like, without uh, hyperbole, um, we're in a very serious conundrum. <laughs> so insects um, have undergone mass extinctions in the past, but right now the mass extinction that we're seeing, that we're witnessing, seems to be the largest that's ever been recorded. Once the populations really start to decline, 
you become in danger of losing that species. Right now, we're just in the process of trying to quantify how um, much insects are in, are in trouble. Got it. Got it. A core conservation tool for almost all endangered species is population monitoring. And this is the simple but structured process of going to their habitat on certain parts of their life cycle and understanding how many uh, of those individuals there are. So we'll do these counts for the adult tiger beetles several times over the year in their habitat. It's really straightforward. We will take a line of people, we will walk in that line through the habitat. All of us will be talking to each other about how many beetles we see. By the time we've gone all the way through the end of the habitat, we take a total, and that's our count. Comparing this information year to year allows us to estimate population trends, whether it's increases or declines, from which we make conservation decisions. We have to rely on entomologists and other biologists to go out into the field and monitor the insects. But we shouldn't wait for the counts, you know, we, sh we should start protecting natural areas. You can't really appreciate something unless you know something about it. The thing I want most for people to appreciate about insects is their exquisite, intricate beauty. When you can stand in front of that insect and marvel in its beauty, but then you understand also that it's extinct, it's gone, it's never coming back, and the reason for that is us. Hopefully people will walk away with an appreciation of them, and they'll marvel in them, and they'll realize, look, they're, they're too beautiful to be lost, they're too important to be lost.